Hello everyone, Plaguehead here, and welcome back to the Minecraft Timelapse series. Before we get into the meat of this episode, I would like to walk you through some of the off-camera decorations I've made in the previous builds. I stated before that I wanted to give these two buildings a very claustrophobic appearance, giving the occupant little room but everything they need. So of course, I had to make it as such. With a cork board and a kitchenette, this little building feels more like home than ever. Secondly, the cave home was given basic decor and a neat little painting to make it feel as if it has been lived in for some time. With that out of the way, I hope you all enjoy this episode. Beginning off with the second ancient home, I wanted to go for a similar concept as the first, once old and dilapidated but modernized to fit the ever so rising demand of living space. Digging out the rock face of the mountain one block at a time, I wanted to give this building a little more room, as if a family lived in the tight housing unit. Using stone as a base block, I began experimenting using other blocks like stripped spruce to add some color. The base is lined with dark oak wood planks to more match the style of their neighbor, and a floor of oak planks for the same reason. With the main space done, it was time to start decorating the space. Using chests, beds, and spruce stairs, I added small details to give this little old building people who lived in it. Next up, I used stone to create a simple roof for the house. It's not anything special, after all. With the interior done, it was time to spice up the walls. Using the same mix of anzadite, gravel, stone, and cobble, I wear down the outer walls and line the roof with dark oak wood to create the exterior roofing. Next up with the pathway. The area is far too poor to receive proper roads, so they can only have beaten down grass trails. Next up, I throw slams, blocks, and buttons all over the outside to further age both the buildings. Next on our to-do list is the empty space on the upper walkway. This was a bit of a tricky design, but I wanted to include a bit of diagonal walling to it, seeing as the same the building was at the corner. Using the same brick pellet, I began with the extrusion between the two houses, adding a roof before adding the brick and redstone concrete walls. Using the same spruce flooring as before, I lined the floor with a beautiful brown planks. Ugh, do that three times fast making the extrusion a dip in the design to add some extra dimension to the structure. We begin with the real build by layering concrete at the base and fixing up the hill at the back. Using spruce as an extrusion piece, as usual, we slowly begin putting the building together piece by piece before adding a small entryway and a tiny patio. With the first floor complete, we begin designing the roof with the same cobblestone design as its predecessor, only this time making it a much flatter concept. The outward curve is neatly covering the diagonal turn around the corner. To our luck, the two buildings' roofs connect to one another, and after adding some supports to the beams, we begin working on the second story. The second story is more like a tower for the building, with a rather cramped space and windows on two sides to look out onto the town. We begin experimenting with cobblestone corners as to match the roof, however these are quickly replaced with the second experimental design using the old classic stone bricks, which I adore, using in many builds. I don't want to talk about this disaster, however. Finally, we begin working on the building stairway to the second floor. The building attempt goes from the ground up. However, due to complications, I erase it and work from top to bottom, circling a stripped spruce log spike before filling the space with a floor. Finally, we get rid of the atrocity of brick walls and flatten out the walls properly, digging out holes for the windows and nearly finishing the second story by throwing in windows to look out of. I wanted to use a different block for the second story roof, making a design which I have never dabbled with in my lifetime. 
It was a rather tricky part, going back and forth like a paper and a typewriter, the realization of ideas failing to hit me one after another. But with determination and stubbornness at my side, I continued to experiment with everything I could possibly get a hold of. I grew fond of the new design quickly. I liked the small A-roof design and the extrusions fit in quite nicely. The home was finally being put together properly, and with a song in my heart and a roof halfway finished, I worked tirelessly on the rest of the roof, matching, make, eh, making sure both sides evenly matched the needlessly complex structure. The home having a unique feeling to it was the most important thing to me, hence why I spent so long perfecting this polished antidote roofing. The stone bricks were replaced with spruce logs to make the edges of the home pop out more. I zoomed back and forth to make sure everything looked nice. Before beginning to texture the house using the same red concrete as the rest of the walls. I could possibly use other blocks, however, this is the pattern I have always thought to be best. Lastly, a door to sign our beautiful handiwork. The one block wide staircase always looked ugly to me, so I decided to replace it with something larger. Medieval scaffolding is perhaps the proper way to go. Using a mix of oak and spruce, which if you can't tell is my favorite one-two punch, I hold the scaffolding up using basalt, at least I think that's what it is. For now, I set up the ladders to allow citizens a way up to their small homes, and from this point, if you see any concrete shapes in the background, most of them are unimportant for the time being, and will be removed soon. It's finally time to get on with the star of the show. As I have stated earlier, if you don't like how a building looks, you should tear it down and build it back up from square one. This is exactly what I did, switching out the ugly looking box for a much more realistic stripped spruce and stone structure. I find the dimensions most fitting for the building, which resides right out of the castle gates, and get right to work. For now, the lower floor consists of a very bland palette. However, later on I can come back to add more variety to the walls. Right now, I'm only concerned with the shape of the structure. Lining logs around the structure first, I first build a patio, then create the first floor in an admittedly ridiculous method. At last, it was time for the second story. Stairs were placed to expand the building's size for the second story, and stripped logs were added for the obvious support beams. I decided to have a small growth at the back, which I'll discuss in a bit. At this point, I experimented with bone blocks, before deciding on white concrete and diorite for an added polished version to make up the walls. Of course, I had to push them back. For now, white concrete will be used to create the walls, simply for convenience as I go back and style up the walls later on in the video. Next up is the connection between the two floors on the outside. After bringing the walls down a level, I place a trapdoor between the stairs to add some depth, and a slab and trapdoor arch on the second story, further creating said depth, doing this for every panel of the build. We're finally coming up to the roof of the building. I began by layering spruce logs as before, before placing spruce stairs beneath them, even creating window holes in the center of the panels. Of course, as promised, I textured the front with a polished and unpolished variation to diorite. Any two-story is incomplete without a second floor, so let's fix that. Next up is something special, a stairway from the outside leading to the second story. I've seen it in lots of fantasy builds, so why not here? Next, a railing is put in so Mr. Wilhelm doesn't trip and possibly break his back. At last, it's time to begin adding texture to the walls. Stone bricks are used for the first floor, while the unpolished and polished diorites are used for above. 
Well, I'm certainly no B-double-O. I think I did a good job. It is finally time for the roof. Unlike last building, I wanted to make this one more unique than simply stairs on stairs on stairs. So a much flatter design was decided upon. Using dark oak wood slabs, I began by creating rows of planks so that placing slabs would be much, much simpler. Of course, the slab blocks had to be two slabs thick, so the roof didn't seem too thin. Next up, the interior needed some support, so let's do it. The building is nearing completion. With the roof constructed, I began creating textured walls beneath the roof. Lastly, the boards were added so that the final floor had some extra flair. The big house was finished, and as I realized how better my builds had become, I immediately began working on changing up the concrete guides for the walkway. Orange is the main roads, and lime is the side roads. At last, it was time to begin preparing for the new built. Using stone and andesite, I designed a simple looking shape before digging the, up the red concrete mess in the back, replacing it with andesite. The purpose of these buildings I will discuss later. I like to do, add this little intrusion to this one. Unfortunately, this building I didn't like the turnout of. There is a lot of empty space by the roads of the castle, and this structure would make that land impossible to use. So, unfortunately, this design will be scrapped later on, so there can be less space in the end. For now, however, enjoy this clip of me building these many, many arches. After building that, I began on improving the landscape, flattening out the upper parts. There will be a lot more hills later on, however, so stay tuned. The final building of today is another cave house. This one I decided to have a bit more fun with. This one wouldn't be another small, cramped housing unit, but instead a restaurant or a storage space for tools or other various items, along with the poor district. Think of it as a sort of disguise. The castle could be pillaged and raided and all the stuff gone. However, the poor homes would be left alone due to there being no valuables in them. This building is given more of a cavernous feeling to it, with a long hallway-like main room, the walls weathered and dug into from years and years of weathering. Creating a cave system which once housed the first settlers of this city, the structure now resides as a historical monument. 
Perhaps in a later episode, I'll dig deeper into the lore of the settlement and how it was founded. For now, let's focus on this building. Beginning with a basement slash cave floor, I use the best method for clearing out large spaces available to man. Blowing shit up. From there I began excavating the stone, making a large spacious cavernous hole for later purposes, which I will get into in a later episode. Of course, the building needs the classic worn-down exterior of the poor man's district and the rushed chaotic roofing to boot. Mixing and matching the three block types, we find a style that works before attaching the roof. In a greatly chaotic pattern, we effectively throw stairs, slabs, and planks at the top of the building and see what sticks. However, this still turns up with some sort of success, so we keep it. Finally, we add extra blocks and slabs to the exterior, and at last the shelter is constructed. Before this video ends, I'd like to say thank you to those who've made it this far. These building episodes are a pain to make, so why not consider subscribing, hitting that bell, liking, and commenting on the video. After all, by doing so, you'll be notified when you upload the next episode, where I build this structure. This little family home right here. Something to go on this edge. And dive deeper into the history and wonders of this town. No matter what, I will keep updating this series. And as the curtains draw near, I will see you all later. Goodbye.